It's more critical than ever to elevate facts, science, and the physician voice when educating Americans on health and medicine. There's so much misinformation out there. We have on our, our show great, smart, hardworking people that are in leadership and not in leadership in healthcare. And, and we're trying to give them a voice, an opportunity to amplify their voice, to talk about what they're doing. And, and, and you know, most people, as you know, love to talk about what they're doing. So we try and provide that outlet. I've been practicing for 16 years and seen over 5,000 patients. There's a lot of knowledge and wisdom that comes with that that's not just my medical information or facts. Hello and welcome to the Permanente Medicine Podcast. I'm Chris Grant, your host and Chief Operating Officer of the Permanente Federation. On this episode, I'm excited to welcome two fellow podcasters from different areas of the healthcare space to discuss how we use this platform to elevate physician voices. Calling into the show today are Scott Becker and Dr. Katie Deming. Scott Becker is the founder and publisher of Becker's Healthcare and Becker's Hospital Review. He's also host of the Becker's Healthcare podcast that features interviews and conversations with prominent leaders in the healthcare industry. Katie Deming is a radiation oncologist from Northwest Permanente in Oregon who launched a new podcast called Born to Heal that focuses on the physical, spiritual, and emotional healing from the inside out. Welcome to the show, Scott and Katie. I'm thrilled to be joined by two wonderful voices in the field of medicine. Thank you so much for having us. What a pleasure to join you and Dr. Deming. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's my privilege to be here with you both. All right. Well, let's get started. You know, I've been doing this podcast for four years. In fact, I remember kind of proposing this idea and saying this may be a medium for an extended audience to meet many of the folks that I have the privilege of working with every day. So today, four years into this, I'm excited to get to talk to a couple fellow podcast hosts. To get started, can you tell me a little bit about your shows and the past that led you to hosting them? Why don't we get started with you, Scott, and then we'll hear from Katie. Sure. So, so the core of our podcast is a Becker's Healthcare podcast, generally short interviews, 10, 15 minute interviews, four to five questions with CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, uh, chief nursing officers, physician leaders, anybody across the healthcare spectrum. It keeps us closely connected to the healthcare ecosystem, which is basically my entire life. We view it as having multiple purposes. We try and make sure our audiences, that they're short bites of information, teach and entertain people. We think of it as easy listening, not not to sit there and, and, and beat yourself up and take hours of notes, but easy listening, teach and entertain, amplifying the voices of leaders, sharing best practices, like ideally somebody comes away from our podcast after 10, 15 minutes of listening, you know, with maybe a, a thought or two they could use and just a little bit inspired, a little bit, of, you know, it's, it's taken a part of the day. It's, it, it's encouraged them a little bit, inspired them a little bit. And they hear from other leaders or from people hopefully like themselves. You know, I remember our first month of episodes, we had 143 downloads total. Now every month we have 350 to 400,000. So we've had great growth in it. And it's been just a, a magnificent pleasure to visit with people and stay connected. Uh, Katie, tell us a little bit about how you got started in this and, and, and Born to Heal. Sure. So it, my podcast actually started a little bit by accident where I had, I've been on as a guest on many podcasts and I was on a podcast in, I guess it was September. And after that interview, the host said, you know, you really should be sharing this information that you have about, you know, kind of deeper healing and, and helping patients with cancer, with kind of the emotional and spiritual aspects of healing. You should be sharing that in some format. And have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I really hadn't and, but took it as a challenge. Like maybe this would be a good way for me to share 
information that I don't have time to share with every patient given the constraints, you know, in a medical setting. And so I launched it in October and there's a theme here with the short format. So just like Scott, my format is, you know, 15 minutes of quick bites. And really what I'm trying to do is provide little tips that can help people who need healing. The topics that I cover are common topics that I've seen patients struggle with over the years. And so then they can just go to a quick episode that will give them what they need on that day. Well, just fascinating. And I'm so glad that you that you did step up to the calling when it was suggested to you. And I think we all need, you know, quick tips in life, especially when when going through uh, perhaps some of the more scariest moments uh, like a cancer diagnosis. With so many sources of information out there right now, it's more critical than ever to elevate facts, science, and the physician voice when educating Americans on on health and medicine. There's so much misinformation out there. What do you see as the role for podcasters in helping this cause? And what are some of the best practices for promoting this programming? Scott, why don't we head back to you? Sure. And Chris, I think it's a it's an incredibly complicated question. We have on our, our show great, smart, hardworking people that are in leadership and not in leadership in healthcare. And, and we're trying to give them a voice, an opportunity to amplify their voice, to show them off, to give them a chance to sort of, you know, to, to talk about what they're doing. And, you know, most people, as you know, love to talk about what they're doing. We, we try not to be, um, we try very hard at, at Becker's Healthcare and our podcast, not to be Fox News, not to be CNN, to, to really be as much as possible down the middle, apolitical, and to share thoughts and share views. We believe everybody's got a perspective. Most of them aren't intended maliciously, but we have started away from the anti-vax card in our podcast, not, not because we're trying to, not because we're anti the anti-vaxxers, but we're, we're not trying to be as politically polarizing as possible. We will have people, of course, use the podcast to talk about things. Some of them are issues we care deeply about, like health equity and, and social determinants of health and make sure everybody's taken care of in our country. And we are huge believers of free speech. We believe at the end of the day, notwithstanding all the thoughts on the left and the right, that free speech is the right answer to ultimately solve most problems. But our goal is to amplify the voices of CNOs, CEOs, CFOs, CIOs, everybody there that can provide information, and not just those, physicians, staffers. It doesn't have to be just people in C-suite positions. It could be anybody, because we, we want to hear perspectives from people that are working in healthcare, working in health systems, working in physician offices. Thanks so much. And, you know, if you think about society today, there is so much misinformation that exists in just about every medium. And if there's one place that accuracy, um, integrity, science um, is necessary, it's in it's in healthcare. Katie, give us kind of your thoughts on that importance of a physician voice to speak up and to really educate. Sure. Well, it's interesting because my podcast is less about providing medical information and facts and more about storytelling and showing the human side. I think actually one thing that's really important for people to see is that physicians are human and that we're learning as well. I've been practicing for 16 years and seen over 5,000 patients. There's a lot of knowledge and wisdom that comes with that that's not just my medical information or facts that, you know, most of my consults are spend really educating patients, this is what you treatment you need. But then I find that our patients can really benefit from these other aspects of how to help them cope and manage through the experience of cancer and all of the uncertainty. And like you said, it's one of the scariest times of people's lives. And so I see myself as a human, you know, showing the human side of being a physician. That's wonderful. It, it, and medicine is really all about the, the whole person. Scott, you've been doing the Becker's Healthcare podcast for, since 2018, which was the same year that I launched our Permanente Medicine podcast here. Can you talk a little bit about your show and how it's evolved, some of the lessons that you've learned from your listeners? 
Sure, sure. And I, and I, I love, quite frankly, what Dr. Deming just spoke on, which is this concept of a physician. So it's very similar to the leaders that we talk to. Both a physician has to be great at diagnosis and care planning and treatment, but also has to be highly compassionate. So when you talk about what I've learned, if I've learned one thing over the years, you know, I started off a long time ago. I'm in the late 50s now, what have you. It's embarrassing to have to say it on air or say it on air. But, it, you know, when I started out, a long time ago, worked more with physicians that were working in health systems than healthcare leaders. And if you went back 30 years ago, physicians viewed almost healthcare leaders, CEOs, the, the leadership, the C-suite is almost the enemy. They almost viewed it as those were, were good people doing the Lord's work, and those are people that God knows what they do running systems. The physician leaders in our country, or the, the system leaders in our country, are much like Dr. Deming describes. They're, they're highly compassionate. They're highly intent and doing right for their workforce, for their system, for their communities. They're, they're also highly smart and highly engaged. And so it's this great mix of qualities you see in our leadership. And it's not an easy job. I remember the first time understanding the role of a hospital. It was a COO a long time ago, the system we used to work with. We still work with the system. And, and understanding, oh, my goodness, that role of that COO at this system is a 24-7 job. What I find is the leaders, you know, whether black or white, whether the, the Lloyd Deans, the Gene Woods, the Johnny Spisos, the, the back of the day Bernard Tysons, whether black, white, uh, the leaders of Cleveland Clinic, of Mayo, they care deeply. I mean, they care deeply about what they're doing, and, they, and they're very smart. I mean, it's this great mix. Almost all of them at a certain level have tremendous emotional intelligence to go with, you know, good at what they do, to, to be in addition to sort of understanding strategy and operations and business and everything else. I mean, you look at the role of somebody like yourself, Chris, running operations for Permanente, that's a huge role. So you have to understand the logistics of it. You had mentioned for a moment, it's almost like for the last couple of years, it's almost been chief procurement officer on top of everything else. And then you also have to be deeply good at dealing with people because at the end of the day, there is no, you can't do anything today without magnificent teams and people. And I think the, the leaders in our country, the health leaders in our country, are literally, in, in so many ways, magnificent. It's an imperfect system, but at the end of the day, we take care of 330 million people. Dr. Deming talks about being a great physician. It's not just taking care of the person with radiation oncology, it's caring about the person. Those are gr great observations. Katie, um, you've made a meaningful mark in oncology, and you're relatively new to the podcast world when you launched Born to Heal in the fall of 2021. How do you bring your 16 years of experience caring for literally hundreds of cancer patients to the show, and how does your experience influence, and I really love the words that you said earlier, the stories that you help to tell? Yeah, well... My podcast is totally based on my experience as a physician, and I'm learning as I go. This has been a learning opportunity for me to explore a new way to reach patients and help educate and teach. And so I, I have to say that I'm not an expert. I'm definitely learning on this journey, but I do you know, notice that when I'm seeing patients now, I'm listening for questions that are themes that I hear. And then I'll do an episode on that to be able to address that common question or concern that comes up. And then also, you know, you start a podcast and you don't really know you can see the stats, so I can see how many people are listening. I can see that I, I had a lot of downloads and that it's going well compared to other people that I know who've launched podcasts, but you don't really know how this is influencing people. But recently I've started to see that where patients coming into the clinic, they're actually being treated by other doctors, but then asking can they have a visit with me? <laughs> you know, so they, they want to talk about these other things. So I'm realizing, oh, this, this is information that patients are looking for. For me, I'm learning and I'm enjoying it. And, and I, you know, you just kind of, as you go, you're, you know, I'm adjusting to the needs and, and what I'm hearing, but it's been very fulfilling and, and really a lot of fun for me. That's fantastic. And, and I, I know you're making a huge difference. All right. This question's for both of you. 
the medical landscape has shifted tremendously over the last couple of years between COVID, changing patient needs and innovation in care delivery. What are a couple of the topics that you see as important to bring to the forefront of the conversation right now and moving forward? Scott, why don't we, uh, why don't we start with you on this question? Thank you, Chris. I, I think probably more than anything is this issue of provider shortages and a handful of things that are connected to that. So it's if, if I was to work or preach on an issue, it would be we need to figure out a way to streamline healthcare education. We need to improve residency funding. Nurse education needs to be streamlined. Doesn't mean it still doesn't have to be a thorough education, but it seems like somehow or another, the, the medical industrial complex, just like people talk about the college industrial complex, has just gotten out of whack. Got brilliant people, 51,000 people apply to medical school this year, only 21,000 will get in. We have a huge shortage in our country of doctors. We have a huge problem on immigration that used to solve a lot of our problems on doctors. We've got so many things that are causing us to have almost self inflicted wounds. Uh, because a lot of people want to be doctors, a lot of people want to be nurses. You know, when people talk about burnout, but you're going to have constant burnout if people have to work too hard. If you have to work at a certain pace, it, burnout's endemic in any profession, not just healthcare. It's never going to person. Anybody's doing the same exact thing for 30 years at a time, but for 30 years long, they're going to be burnt out. It's just it's a given, and it's worse when you have to do the compassion issues, the 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 interpersonal issues. It takes you to deal with as a doctor, a nurse, and now a healthcare professional. The easiest way to solve burnout is by giving people some time so they can take care of themselves. I would argue that that shortage of specialties is just as bad. If you want to get to see a specialist in our country, you know, we all know if you want to see the right specialist, you almost have to know somebody. I mean, it's become really, you talk about sort of a lack of health equity, it's as pronounced in the specialist area as any place. So we got to make it easier to become a specialist, become primary care. We have to recruit, retain, and automate health care. But at the end of the day, we got to figure out a way to create a larger pool of doctors, allied health professionals, nurses for our large and growing population. It's great wisdom and a, and a, and a tremendous observation. Uh, you know, being, being the dad of, of a uh, recent medical school graduate who's now in residency, you're right. It's a long process and a complex process to get through. And I myself, having you know spent three decades in healthcare, uh, haven't seen uh, a period where there where burnout um, has been as great as it is right now, you know, along with dedication. And and what I mean by that is that the healthcare community, whether it's physicians, nurses, allied health professionals, or the receptionist, are so dedicated to patients because they see what they're going through. They see the fear amidst COVID. They see the foregone care that's been delayed and they really, really want to help. Dr. Deming, um, let's turn to you. What are the big themes, the big conversations that need to happen now? Yeah, well, and I appreciated Scott's answer there, and I think that those are those are really the, the big problems in, in medicine right now and burnout, just being a physician and in communities of physicians and seeing this, it kind of scares me actually, because we're having a shortage now, but that that's getting bigger. But from my perspective as a healer, as I think about, you know, what are the things that I'm really wanting people to hear about now, given the landscape of what we're in now two years into COVID, is there two things that for me have been amplified? They, they were already issues that I saw within cancer care, but now they've become epidemic in our population. And one of them is fear is, you know, it's quite common when someone faces a life threatening illness like cancer that they are afraid. And so fear and managing fear and how to calm people's nervous system is a big part of my job as an oncologist. But one of the things that I've seen is that we've gone from having people who are sick be afraid to a whole population that is afraid. And not only are they afraid of getting COVID, they're afraid of each other. And there's this kind of pervasive fear in our communities that is impacting people's health. So I see managing fear, and I talk about that a lot on my podcast of 
how do we manage fear and how, you know, can we not be afraid of getting COVID or our family members or our neighbors or, or that kind of thing. And then also within cancer care, it's a, it's a big thing to manage. And then the second one is uh, social connection. You know, healing and optimal immune function requires that we are connected to other people. And we have never been as isolated as we are right now. And so that is one thing that I think talking about and really supporting people in connecting is important. And frankly, it's been something that I've felt is a challenge with the infrastructure of everything that's happened with COVID, right? What we've done is we've tell, told our most vulnerable populations who are elderly, immunocompromised, to isolate themselves and not recognizing that this actually impedes their immune system and their ability to heal. And so how do you teach people, yes, to be safe, but then also making sure that they're really staying connected with the loved ones in their lives so that they can have, you know, good health. It, it, it all works together. Katie, those are great, great observations. And, and you know, I think you're right. We Well, we know that the connection between emotions and overall health and we certainly have lived through such an extraordinary period of time where fear has been pervasive and social isolation. So addressing both of those is 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 key. All right, let's have let's have a little fun here. So we're all podcasters and we all create our own podcasts, but I imagine you listen to others in your spare time. When you're not doing your own health podcast, who are you listening to or what are you listening to on your iPhones? Katie, why don't we uh, start with you on this one? Sure. So I actually, it's funny, I don't listen to that many podcasts. I have one podcast that I listen to regularly, which is Jim Fortin. He's a transformational coach and teaches transformation from the inside out. So I do listen to his podcast regularly, but I'm a big reader. So I probably read, you know, last year I read over 80 books. So, you know, for me, I'm, I've always have books, you know, that I'm listening to either on Audible or um, reading on my Kindle. And the two most recent that I, I just finished reading was Cured by Jeffrey Redinger, who is a psychiatrist at Harvard. And then the other is that um, I just finished TED Talks by Chris Anderson. So that's on my reading list that I just finished. Ah, very nice. All right, Scott, how about you? What, what do you listen to, whether it's a podcast or or another media. Well, I'm exactly in the same spot as Dr. Deming, and that I'm a constant listener and reader of books. I'm constantly listening to audiobooks constantly. And they go through a mix of, you know, fiction and nonfiction. The fiction side is often mystery, suspense novels. I just finished the Harlan Coben, his latest book. I love anything by Bernard Cornwell, which is historical fiction or, or Lee Child. And then on the nonfiction side, just finished another book on the opioid crisis. And this one was called The Hard Sell about crime and punishment in the opioid area. I listened to a book about the House of Rothschild. Do more reading of the self-improvement books, reading one by a brilliant woman author called Passion of Purpose right now that I'm finding interesting. And in my listening is almost all today, audiobooks, and it's a whole mix of mysteries and, and nonfiction. And then my reading is constantly around self-improvement, business, other kinds of subjects. And I find it, uh, you know, you, you know, inspirational, you know, you, you, it's not that you learn something that new, but it helps you newly categorize your thoughts, organize your thoughts, which is so much about, for it, go back to the topic Dr. Deming said, which for me is so much about staying sane and centered, staying healthy. And so much of my reading and thinking and doing is aimed at somehow or another, constantly trying to recenter, organize thoughts and stay physically and mentally healthy. Well, I think we're all works in progress of ourselves, right? So I'm, I'm not surprised. And thank you, Scott and Dr. Deming, for stepping away from your own podcast and from your busy schedules to spend time with me. Thank you, Chris, so much for having me. It was my pleasure. And, and thank you, Chris. What a privilege to be with you and Dr. Deming made my day. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great afternoon. And thanks once again to all our listeners for tuning in. We'll see you next time. The opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the speakers 
and are not necessarily the views of Kaiser Permanente, the Permanente Medical Groups, or the Permanente Federation.